Hello everyone, my name is Michael Garrity. I'm a BCDR product manager here at Datto. Today's Datto Labs video is gonna focus on the virtual Cirrus platform, and we're gonna be doing a quick demo. The first thing I wanna cover is the differences between a virtual Cirrus and a physical Cirrus device. Now, really there's no big difference in terms of what they can do. We're running the same software stack on it, which means you get the same set of features on both of these types of Cirrus units. The main difference really comes down to continuity and how we perform it. So on the physical series, you have something called local virtualization, which allows you to virtualize on the data appliance in the event one of the production servers goes down. And on the virtual series, instead of using that local virtualization feature, we use virtualize via hypervisor, which actually offloads this process onto your production hypervisor. Now, for some quick visuals on the process. So here we'll see a picture of local virtualization. Down at the bottom, we have this hypervisor cluster. So we have two different hypervisors set up. We have three different VMs running on them. Let's just imagine these are Windows VMs. These are your production, right? One might be a file server, domain control, or exchange server. And then we're backing those up. We can do agent-based or agent-less to the local data appliance. Again, notice here it's physical. And then we also have our physical machines, right? Whether this was a, a desktop that's in the environment or maybe you don't have a virtual environment fully and some of your machines are still physical, right? You'll be back those up via an agent to that data appliance. Now, in the event where a disaster occurs where any of these VMs or one of those physical machines were to go down, you have the ability to virtualize it on the data. So, the data appliance has a built-in hypervisor. We use KVM as part of Ubuntu Linux. And we're virtualizing a copy of your system on that KVM hypervisor. So then you're up and running, and that would take the place of that physical machine or the virtual machine from your production hypervisor. Now, when we switch over to virtualize via hypervisor, it looks kind of similar here, right? We have these VMs running, but now you see a fourth VM. This would be the vCirrus, but then you're doing the same in terms of backups of physical machines and virtual machines. Now, a few minor differences here is that your backup storage is gonna be either on a NAS device or a SAN device on that network. And now when you're going to virtualize, what happens is you use the virtualize via hypervisor restore method. And from there, we're gonna utilize the CPU and RAM of your production hypervisors and then we're going to spin up a copy of that restore wherever the backup is stored, whether it's on the NAS or the SAN device, and we're going to present that as backup storage to the hypervisor. And then from there, you're going to have a VM running. Now, there's one thing to see it in a diagram. We're actually going to go live and take a look at what this process looks like. So here, we're in the interface of a virtual data appliance. Notice up top, you could see that our hypervisor is VMware. Keep in mind, we do have it available for Hyper-V as well. Today's example is just using VMware. Now, let's run through that same process. There's a disaster. Maybe we catch ransomware. Now we're looking to do a virtualization. We're going to start by going to the Restore tab. We're then going to select the server we want to virtualize. We'll select Virtualize via Hypervisor. We'll select the recovery point that we want. And then you're going to select the hypervisor connection. You'd have set this up during the initial data deployment. This is normally going to your vCenter rather than a standalone host. We're going to click Start Restore. On the left-hand side, you could set some CPU and RAM options if you'd like, or you could just check off this box to use whatever the original virtual machine configuration was. Then on the right-hand side, when you're ready, you can click Start VM. I don't check that rescue agent option since I'm just doing this as a test, but normally you'd keep that enabled to take backups of the virtualization while it's running on the data appliance or on your hypervisor. Now, this VM is booting up. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to switch over into VMware. And we'll see a few different things happening. So here, I am in my vCenter. First thing I wanna take note of is if you go to the data stores, you'll see that there's this brand new NFS data store that was created. So this is the connection to the virtual data appliance where we're presenting the backup images storage. 
Now, if we go to our VMs, we'll also see this brand new VM that was created. So this is the one that was initiated from the Daddle appliance. So right inside of VMware, you could manage that VM just as you would any other production VM. Now, there's two ways that you can access this. Since it's showing up in your hypervisor, you could just launch the web remote from here. Or if we're back on our local Daddle appliance, we could actually just open up the remote connection and then connect via a local VNC session. Now, I will say there is an added benefit that you have of virtualizing via hypervisor over a local virtualization where you could restore back to production typically quicker. That's because now that this VM is running in our hypervisor, when we're ready to restore back to production, all we have to do is migrate this VM. If we have storage vMotion available, we could do that live while the VM is running. But if you don't have storage vMotion, you could always just shut this VM down at the end of the day when you're ready and then migrate it back to your production data store and you'll be recovered from that disaster. So that's really the big difference between a virtual Cirrus and a physical Cirrus. Thanks for watching everyone. Hope you found this useful.